this video diary, we're getting up close and personal with UFC lightweight Donald Cerrone. Find out what makes Donald the man he is as he takes us through a week in his nonstop life. We're taking you outside the octagon on UFC from all angles. Monday, November 3rd, 2014. Try to bust it, come on. He's doing 10. He's on you, you're doing like four. I was really against Elevate, to be honest with you. The paint, over the paint. Like against strength and conditioning and all that stuff, I used to just do my own thing. So Elevate's really important for me for the last like five fights, just more, I go every day there. A lot of conditioning, you know, I believe if in my mind, I can tell my heart that it's all there, I'm good to go. So Elevate helps me just be conditioned ready every day to fight. Do you uh, tug a war here, it's like this. Down all fours, abs in. Because he had a pussy with all your my broken rib. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Taking these boys duck hunting. His first time I took him last year, so yeah. I was buying a gun for my little brother to go duck hunting. Him and my grandma were coming. My grandma hadn't been home for quite some time, so she was coming down, asked her to pick up my little brother so he could come duck hunting because season just opened past Thursday before that, so it was time. He just got his hunter safety card, he's all excited. So I was buying him a new gun. There's gonna be about 10 of us out there, so we have to be very careful. I get delayed uh, buying firearms in New Mexico. It's insane. They'll delay me weeks. Sometimes they'll delay me two weeks, and they call me, come down, and pick up your stuff. So I needed the gun right then. So I'd be like, oh, how should my grandma come pick it up, you know? But those words to me, that's like my mom. So that's like saying, oh, I'll have my mom do it. Like, that's what I'd do. I would do. I, I could say, hey, grandma, I need you. I need you to go down to the porn store and pick up that Hustler magazine for me, you know? And she would just go do it, like not even take a beat. I go, it's not for me. <laughs> And the guy goes, yeah. Yeah. She's the person I call when I'd wind up in jail at 6 a.m. I'd call her grandma. I'm, I'm, go get go get some cash. Come bail your, come bail your boy out. The place where I was taking my brother is, uh, it's like a bird sanctuary that flooded. So I didn't know how deep it was. So I needed to go there and make sure I didn't drag my little brother through waste high water, you know, so I went down there to check it out and see how uh, how deep the water was. That was my plan. I didn't actually anticipate seeing any duck or anything. So I said, Leonard, let's, let's ride down and see how deep this is and get a game plan for Wednesday. My bad boy, Buggy. The, uh, we unload it. There was like a crazy little creek bed we had to get down, so we just jumped in, kind of bahawed it down. And I guess getting down is the easy part. Getting it back up was the, was the troublesome part. So we paid hell getting her back up and Totaled the, totaled the buggy, totaled my truck. It was, it was an experience for sure. <laughs> I'm gonna say it takes a good hour, hour and a half of trying to get up the hill, hooking the winch up to the truck. We burnt the winch up, we broke the ramps, smashed the side of my truck. It was good. <laughs> two blown tires and one, two, three. <sighs> I was just burning. I was just gonna charge the game and leave it there if I was gonna get it in my truck or not. Three, go. Tuesday, November 4th, 2014. I have this damn tooth. I got a hole in it. I bit into a gobstopper and broke it. Thanks for getting me in so early. So I've been trying to get it, but things always come up. We have such a crazy schedule, you know, always here and there. Okay, you're going to Phoenix to NASCAR? Uh-huh. And then you're back when? Sunday. I need a damn app on my phone that just tells me where I can just talk. I'm sure it's there. I just talk to it and it alerts me every day, but I, I double book myself, maybe even triple book myself a lot. From where I came from to where I am today, you know, it's a big, big difference. And uh, finding that ranch was something that, you know, my grandfather helped me do. I told him that's the one I want. He came out brought the cash, looked for it, paid for the guy, cash on site. And that was a, a story of me getting the property that I love. <laughs> this is Shirley, that's Barney. I can do anything I want there, you know, that, that's what I love. It means home, it's just everything I've ever wanted. It's out in the country, we shoot our guns, 
I have my horses. And then these are my babies. They're starting to get their hair for winter. What are you, why, why are you getting it all over the ground? Huh? You like eating it? I thoroughly enjoy it. My grandma always said, I don't know why you don't just wake up and get on your knees and thank somebody every single day. Being in the UFC, you have to have your CAT scans, MRIs. That was actually the fastest one I've ever done because they just did my nasals. Oh, that's my nose? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So this is the right side. That's, that's the side that's right deviated. Side. This one was just wanting to see where the problem's coming from, you know? So I was just. I can only show you. It's cool. I mean, technology is awesome. One day they're going to be able just to fix everything. I love bird hunting, <laughs> trying to trick the ducks that our fake ducks are real ducks. <laughs> Wednesday, November 5th, 2014. We well, gotta get up early because you gotta, first of all, the ranch is what, two hour drive from the duck pond. We gotta be there early, because you gotta get everything set up so right at daybreak you can knock them bitches down. Gun, your gun. Listen, these barrels do not go into the ground, period, okay? Whatever we do. Right, so if we drop the guns, you have to go this way. Don't let this sink into the dirt, okay? What time is it? Well, we got sun coming up already. Damn, it's cold. <laughs> you got it, Frank? I love bird hunting, you know, to me, hunting birds is fun, but again, it's just like, it's the sport of, of the hunting, you know, it's the hunt, it's the trying to trick the ducks that are fake ducks or real ducks. <laughs> Calling them in, it's like a big, a big game, you know, so you, they come flying over, you, you call at them, let them think that there's ducks down here, like, hey, this is where the party's at, come on to the circle. They'll circle them, they're like, nah, that's not right, and they'll fly off. So trying to play the game with them where you can get them to come and land is, uh, that's fun to me, man. It's, it's a good time. Circle again, don't get them yet, not yet. I just want clean shots, man. Clock high. Those are what you're talking about, Leonard. Up in the clouds, right above the clouds, probably 15 of them. Y'all need the eagle eye. Here they come. Hear them quacking back to us. Yeah, ultimate frisbee, man. It's like a secret workout, you know? You go in there and you're running sprints playing frisbee. You need to have all your teammates around with you all the time, so just another activity to get everyone involved in and play. And plus, like I said, it's like a secret workout, so we're, we're in there having fun. Normally in the summer, we just go outside, but it's starting to get cold and just rent the soccer stadium and have some fun. Sky jump. Here's Kyle with Roni. Three, two, one, go.
Thursday, November 6, 2014. Getting up early, going to Vegas, coming back same day, you know. Here's the thing, fighters complain and bitch about that all the time. You guys have us on travel, have us out doing stuff. Well, just make time, figure out where you gotta train. I don't understand the issues, you know, but people are like, we hate doing it, but these are fun obligations. You're telling me in the next month I get to travel to four different, two countries, four different cities. You know, like the way I look at it, that's awesome. That's the way I look fast paced, let's go, 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 let's enjoy it. So yeah, those are my obligations, but they're fun. Hey, you used to come up in an old Hyundai, now you're Cadillac flying. You know, struggle's real. Schaller and I, Dave Schaller and I go way back. Um, he was my PR guy in the WC, talking about obligations again, you know? In the WC, we used to take off and fly and we promote the fight. I remember when you started, you were sponsored by like Albuquerque Dollar Store. Now look at you. Budweiser, big energy drinks, that was easy. wrecking bad boy buggies. So Dave and I would always, you know, I, I would always go with him and he's kind of my road off. So we've we exchanged a great relationship. I'm actually the godfather to his two twin daughters, so. Uh, that's cool on a side note fact. January 3rd here in Vegas. Miles Jury. Yeah. How long are you for? Just two hours, man. I gotta go. That's it? Yeah, do the stand over at SEMA. You still uh, doing the road last Nah, I mean, the big man don't let me do nothing no more. And I just lost a bet to him. Oh, I know. So now I can't do anything oh, yeah, well, 10 that? days before a fight. Oh. Nothing. <laughs> Good? How you doing, man? How awesome is that? <laughs> you signing right now or what? Oh, 11, yeah. Who are you? I gotta go upstairs and sign at some e-break spot, I don't know. It's a rough life, huh? Yeah, it's tough. All right, your line is warm. Oh, wow, perfect. <laughs> Hello, how are you? It's cool to me. I, I I love it. There's um I'm just a regular man, I mean, who does a sport that people love to watch. The crazy thing to me is like the older people, they're like, You're my grandson and my my daughter, they love you, but I I don't miss a fight. It's like, wow, how cool is that? I mean, to have people get that into it, involved, and know your whole backstory. You know that fault. No, and I'm like, damn, how do you remember me saying that? You know? Win or lose, you go in there and give it your all. That's what I love. It's the only way I know how. Yeah. Go make it soup. James. James. Do a little palm pick here. Yeah. Huh? I appreciate it. I just, uh, like I said, I enjoy, you know, sitting there, like, what a job. Well, I gotta go to SEMA and look at badass cars and take a few photos. You know, to me, it's, what a, what a life, man. It's, it's, it's so fun. There we go. Talking with, with Mass from Tap Out, I used to ask him, like, why are you so involved? Why is it such a passion to you? And, and he was like, if I could touch one person, if I can talk to 50 people and touch one person that changes someone's life, that's all I'm looking for. And that, like, hit me home to me, like, damn. If I could touch one person, that's all I need to do, you know, touch one person a day and get them to to not doing something or, or to change their attitude or, or to live a little bit differently. So my whole philosophy is live a life worth living. Like that's my, what I try to preach me. So every day on Sunday, you know, it's Sunday, get off asses and go do something. If I can touch one person, get them up, go throw a football around. So the fan base and the and the fun is all awesome, but just living a life worth living is to me is, is the most fun of this whole thing. Please, get your high chair over here. How you doing? Hey man, so, um, did I step on your little baby foot? You should have heard it. Um, we're going to jump off a building at 1.30. Nope, nope, I'm not. I'll be here working. I got to cover your shift. Sky jump. Yeah. OK, Donald, yeah. we're going to do intro video now. Oh, that's awesome. OK, here, here we go. This is Donald, who's here in Beulah at the beautiful Stratosphere in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, where he's ready to jump off the top of the Stratosphere, uh, 855 feet, which is approximately 108 stories. Going 45 miles an hour in 17 seconds. How do you feel about doing that today, Donald? I wish it was faster, but we're all right. We're good. Here's Kyle with Cerrone. Three, two, one, go. Ugh. 
Great job. How was it? All right. And they also, you want to see the camera? We need a base jump next. You're aiming NASCAR. It's just unbelievable, man. You know, it's where I started to where I am now. It's just so cool. <laughs> Friday, November 7, 2014. First, we go train. Got to train. I'm at 27, so he needs to at least be there. 27, Frank. And out slowly. Living the life I live. Playing, 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 playing. I still got to train, because I still have to answer that bell. So no matter where I am, I always find somewhere to train. So you know, before we took our road trip here, hit the gym, got that in. Like, I think about coming here and how hard I'm gonna work when I get here, then I get here and I remember how much I hate this place. Why Lindsay? First of all, she's a very attractive girl. I met her in Amarillo, Texas at the uh, Midnight Rodeo. She doesn't take no from me. If we're on the boat, like, if we're on the boat and I snock off to her, she, she, she mad, she gets quiet, and then the whole day, she, I'm in the dog house. I think it was my dance moves that she just couldn't. Every time she started thinking, she just remember me busting the moves, you know. So I go to Vegas down the same road a lot, and along the way, there's this volcano with an ice cave in it that I mean to go check out. So me and Lindsay took a little detour. It's turning to be a hell of a detour. Get all the way to the ice cave, and the ice cave is closed renovating for winter. We're not going to be able to get in. What if it's just an open it's cave, not, though? It's not. I don't know how you have an ice cave that's closed in winter, but they were. No trespassing on the signs. Signs closed, so we do what any good American would do, and we jumped the fence. Went down there and checked it out. It was pretty much what I thought it would be, a giant cave with ice in it. And uh, when we came out, the uh, park ranger was there waiting for us. Does this highway here take you back out to the road? I don't think it is, Arizona. Sometimes doing a little bit of wrong is a little more fun when you have that feeling on your back, like, are we supposed to be here? Are we not supposed to be here? I mean, it was fun. We're here in Phoenix. It took me like 12 hours to get here because we took a wrong turn and sightsee all of uh, Arizona. So if you all want to know about small towns in Arizona, I could probably tell you where to eat along the way. Phoenix to watch my buddy Kevin make a push for the Final Four in NASCAR Spring Cup. Kevin Harvick is a huge UFC fan and part owner in KHI Management, which I'm currently signed with. Kevin and I started working together, and you talk about Fortune 500 companies on my shorts, you know, Budweiser, Easy Go, Realtree, you know what I'm saying? Like, all companies that I'm like, it's, it blows, just blows me away, man. Here I am at NASCAR. It's just unbelievable, man. You know, it's where I started to where I am now. It's just so cool. It's just cool to watch back and, and look at the journey. And I think about that all the time. Hmm. And I don't have to worry about money. There's not my bank account. I'm not worried. Like, is my rent check going to cash tomorrow? You know, like, those all those problems that I used to have are problems that I, I don't have anymore. No, we're number one. No, 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 we're number one. Look up on the big board up there. See, it says number one, four. to be a part of something that finally all the hard work that I have paid off. And he's in to compete for a championship. Checkered flag at Phoenix for Kevin Harvick. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. What a dominating day by Kevin Harvick. thought I'd be sitting in this chair talking to you guys on Fox TV. If you would have asked me 10 years ago, what are you going to be doing in 10 years? I would have been laying hardwood floor and drinking beer. This probably would have been my answer to you. Yeah. Kevin Harvick will celebrate his victory here today. Yeah, yeah boy. 
So here I am today sitting, talking to you wearing a Budweiser shirt in a NASCAR studio. A couple of my friends have called me and told me that I'm not the same guy I used to be, that I've changed and I never called him anymore. I feel like I call him. I've never said it to him, but I'm gonna say it to him now. You guys are still doing the same job you was doing in high school or 10 years later. I want to be talking to the guys that are making millions. Those are the people I want to talk to. You know, that's, I'm not done. I'm not okay where I am. I want to keep going. I, I want to go to the top.